presentation I'm going to give today is on the topic of online DLS measurements for process monitoring. Now the technique we're going to be using here is dynamic light scattering. Dynamic light scattering is a technique that is basically we're going to pick up on the motion due to the Brownian motion of particles suspended in liquid and that's the video we're seeing here on the right. The liquid molecules impact the particle and it has a random thermal motion and that thermal motion is dependent on several things. Basically smaller particles move faster, large particles move slower. And this motion is dependent on the temperature, the viscosity, and the size of the particles. So if we fix the temperature and we know the viscosity, we can then, when we determine the diffusion coefficient, calculate particle size using the Stokes-Einstein equation we see here. The way we do the measurement is we have a light source. We then look at the light scattering from the detector. And as the particles move, we get from the light scattering, we build up this autocorrelation function. From this correlation function, we determine the diffusion coefficient. From the diffusion coefficient, then we calculate the particle size. So that's how we determine the particle size using dynamic light scattering. And most of these measurements are made in the laboratory, but today we'll be talking about how we can do this online. So when we do online, we're doing these measurements in the plant. Here we're interacting with a process stream. This part of the measurement is usually driven by the customer, so they know their process, they know how they want to interact with the stream, and we leave that up to the customer. With these measurements, we typically have to perform a dilution, and this is one of the areas of expertise within particle sizing systems, both with dynamic light scattering and with our other technology, single particle optical sizing, we build a lot of auto diluters. So we have the technology to do dilution of the sample automatically, that's just something that we've been doing for many years and have a lot of expertise in. When we're doing measurements in the plant, we kind of lock down all the instrument parameters because this is no longer experimenting. This is turning into a process monitoring measurement. We lock down all of the parameters that could influence the result, and we also want to lock down the data interpretation because typically we just want a single data point that we're going to use for process monitoring. The instrument parameters that we want to control are temperature and viscosity. Now the light intensity, which is the count rate, we always want to optimize this because an optimum count rate gives us the best results with DLS. We do that with a laboratory instrument with a neutral density filter. We don't use a neutral density filter with the online system, so we just control count rate by controlling dilution. We need to control measurement duration. Measurement duration is generally a function of how broad is the distribution. For a very narrow distribution, we can get away with very quick measurements, but for broader distributions, we need to extend the measurement time. Then the algorithm choices, which will also influence the data interpretation, two basic choices. A Gaussian assumes a symmetric distribution, and that's based on cumulants. Or if we think there's a multimodal result, then we use a derivative of the non-negative least squares, an NLS algorithm, which is a NICOMP algorithm, where we can split peaks. So when we use a Gaussian distribution, as you see here, there's a single peak, and the distribution is symmetric. Uh, this particular sample, though, was a mixture of two polystyrene latex samples, 150 and 200 nanometer PSL particles. There we would need to use the NICOM distribution to split those two peaks. And that's one of the highlights of the NICOM system is this NICOM algorithm. Here we need to choose beforehand, do we know if there's one or two peaks? And then we need to lock this down during the measurement because we need to have easy data interpretation if we're going to use this as a process monitor. So as we look at the software now and we start setting up the system, let's look at how we specifically would lock these things down. The temperature and the viscosity, we input the values here. The count rate, we're going to set it up to work near a count rate of 300 kilohertz. Here we're not going to use a, the neutral density filter, we're just going to control this by controlling the dilution. Channel width is something we typically leave in automatic, but we can reduce that if we know we're measuring very small particles. If we're going to use Gaussian, we can just take the simple result. If we're going to use a NICOMP algorithm, we actually have access to the algorithm here, and we can have it automatically calculate the result in the NICOMP algorithm. But really, for the online installations we've done so far, we typically have been working with the Gaussian, where the single result, which is typically the intensity mean diameter, is a value we're using for process monitoring. We're going to now move from the laboratory into the process environment. And the first time we did this, and this was published back in 1991, was a work we did in conjunction with McMaster University up in Canada. And that was a polymerization emulsion process for polyvinyl acetate. I'll show some data from that work, and then also some data from the biopharma industry, which is collected much more recently. And to us, you know, a bio plant is just another chemical plant. 
and we're just going to use this as a way to control some kind of operation. Usually uh, it's some kind of unit operation where this unit operation is altering the particle size step and we want to use this data to control that unit operation. So usually when we're doing these measurements online, we have some interest in controlling some unit operation step. Here's some information on this first online system which was installed in 1991 and published. I give you the reference down here. And here you see we have a reactor and we have a water monomer and emulsifier and initiator coming into this reactor. And then downstream of the reactor we're taking several measurements. We're taking a density, a gravimetric measurement to understand the concentration. And then looking at both turbidity and the online NICOMP DLS system to look at particle size. So we have these different inputs and then what you see down here on the bottom, this is a function of time and hours. And as they altered these inputs, they were looking for the change in concentration and in particle size. So they started up the reactor and it was fairly stable. And then here at about T equals 5, at about 5 hours, they decreased the emulsifier and the monomer feed. And then we start seeing this steady rise in particle size. And then at about T equals 8 hours, they reduced the monomer and the initiator. And then we start seeing this large decrease in particle size and also decrease in the concentration. So here we are showing how we could track the process and then actually use the size and concentration information to understand how to best optimize these feed rates to generate the size of the particles that was generated from this polymerization emulsion operation. The newer operation that we're going to talk about next was actually creating a nanoparticle for drug delivery. Uh, this was actually a polylactic acid, a PLA nanoparticle, or it could uh, be polyethylene glycol, or you could pegylate the surface. There are various ways to do that. But the idea here is, in general, with nanoparticles for drug delivery, there's been a lot of development here where we look at just getting it down to a certain size. Doxil was for probably the first drug that was placed inside a liposome for targeted delivery of drugs. And now the drug that we're actually looking at here is called an Acurin, and this comes from the company in Cambridge, Bind Therapeutics. And here we have the active ingredient bound up in a polylactic acid polymer matrix. And there is some surface modification so that these will selectively bind at certain places within the patient. And it's very important to keep the particle size of the total particle down at the range right near 100 nanometers, both so it has a long circulation time and also because then we have better accumulation onto the tumor site with the surface modified ligands here that we have on the surface. This is the instrument inside the plant in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is the online system. The sample comes in here, so this sample is actually a quarter inch tube coming from the process. In here is the fluidics where we're going to do the dilution. Down here we have the electronics which takes care of running the instrument. And uh, down here we have the diluent. So what we're going to do here is take in the sample. The fluidics will dilute it. We'll take the measurement and then we drain, clean up and get ready for the next measurement. And the cycle time was on the range of about every two minutes. The process we were going to monitor here was downstream of a high pressure homogenizer. So prior to the homogenizer, we have the organic phase and the aqueous phase going into a mixer to do the coarse mixing. Then this mixed sample comes into the homogenizer, which is where we do the very large reduction. We'd make large particles very small. And it's downstream of this homogenizer where we'd like to take this measurement. And what we want to do is through operator feedback, then control this homogenizer to make sure that we generate particles at the optimum particle size. And that's what we're using the online DLS system is to understand particle size downstream of this homogenizer. So here comes a sample downstream of the homogenizer, comes into the fluidics and we have the sample inlet and we have the diluent inlet. You'll see the diluent here is pressurized and it's best to have this pressurized so that we can get very quick dilution. So sample in, diluent in, and then over here where we see the diagram of the instrument working we have the same thing. Sample comes in, diluent comes in, and this is where we're doing this automatic dilution. After we perform this dilution then we're bringing the sample up to the measurement zone and here it becomes a standard DLS measurement. We have a light source, we have a detector, we get the correlation function and we do our calculations. We get a result and then we clean the cell, get ready to do the next measurement. So that's the basic process for doing the online measurement in this process. The first thing we looked at upon installation of the system was how long should we perform the measurements. As I said before, for narrow distributions, you can do quick measurements. For broader distributions, you have to take your time. So first we looked at what's the effect of taking two one-minute runs and taking the average. 
And then we took some one minute runs and then we started saying what if we take two minute runs how does the data look and the decision was based on the percent RSD the spread of the data and as you see down here we actually had the lowest RSD same thing as coefficient of variation in the calculation right standard deviation divided by the mean normalized multiplied by 100 and what we saw is for the two minute runs is where we had the lowest RSD so we decided for this process we'll take measurements every two minutes all right, so now we've decided our, the length of our measurement, and now let's just start getting a feel for the process. And what we wanted to look at next is what is the effect of homogenizer pressure, which you see plotted here on the right y-axis, on particle size, which is plotted on the left y-axis. So these blue diamonds are the particle size, and this maroon line is the pressure. And as we increase and decrease the pressure, then we can see the change in particle size. So here, as you see this maroon line increasing, showing an increase in homogenizer pressure, we see this decrease in particle size. By then plotting mean size versus pressure of the homogenizer, we see a very direct correlation with an R-squared correlation value of 0.92. And now we understand that for every change in 1,000 PSIG, we're going to have about a 9 nanometer change in particle size. So now we understand if we want to change the particle size, how much of a change in pressure is required to tweak this to the desired particle size, again, which was near 100 nanometers. So now we're understanding the measurement time. We understand what changes in pressure are required to tune this to the particle size we want. And the next step was to just start trying to run these batches and in this batch we took I guess about six samples and what we see at the start is actually these particles are a bit too small they're down here in the range of about 92 nanometers and so what we do is we lowered the homogenizer pressure and then we tweaked it into we were right very close to this magic 100 nanometer size range so here we got a feel for tweaking the process looking at the size and controlling it now that we understand this, then we can start doing the next step, which is trying to go up to a clinical scale. So here on a clinical scale, now we understand this correlation between size and particle size very well. And throughout the batch run, these are, these are all batch runs, here we're, the entire run we see all of the particles within this period are very close to the desired 100 nanometer size range. And that's really the goal of this whole operation. These are very high value particles. We want all of them to be within specification. And if we were taking these samples and bringing them to the laboratory and getting results and say, go change the process a little, you wouldn't really be able to control this so that they're all within specification. But by doing these measurements online and continuously, we know for certain 100% of this batch is directly within specification. And that was the desire of this particular customer. And things worked out very well. Or of course, they wouldn't allow us to show this data. So this is our most recent application of doing online DLS and very successfully controlling this homogenizer to generate particles in the desired size range. So we used to do these measurements in the laboratory and the real point of today's presentation is it's really not so hard now to get these into the process. We can look at your process and then configure our system so that we can fit in there under the pressures and flow rates, etc. So we work closely with each customer where we build these online systems and make sure it fits into the process well. Generally, it's worth the investment if you either have samples that are very high value or the yield is terribly important. Then this investment in online measurements is absolutely worthwhile and we're happy to talk to customers and look at your samples to see if this makes sense for your process. If you would like more information, for instance, we have a flyer on the online system. This application comes from Bind Therapeutics, where I need to thank Ken Bernstein and the other nice people at Bind for allowing us to show this data and to help me prepare this presentation. If you'd like to see the online flyer or the application notes for the data that we presented here today, please visit the website and on the Documentation Download Center, you can download any of those files.